Alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of our Sunnah Follower series entitled How to Perform the Prayer from A to Z. Okay. And in this series, we have been uh, uh, going over the correct way to pray. And when we say correct way, we're speaking about the way that our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to pray we're not speaking about the way that you may have learned from a mathab we're not speaking about how you may have learned from um some group or or something that you're affiliated with you know the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said pray as you see me pray and by the way there is no difference and this is a, a big question that i get from a lot of muslim sisters out there they ask me is there a difference as to how we perform our prayers as women and how men perform their prayers as men the answer is no we all pray the same guys and i want y'all to understand that we all pray the same there's no difference Okay, women pray just like men. The same rules apply to women that apply to men. Even that question that a lot of you sisters ask me, can a woman stand in front? Yes, you can. Okay, you don't have to stand in the middle. If you got a lot of sisters praying behind, with you and, and all that, you can stand in the front just as the imam, just like a man does and the women behind you. You can do that. In fact, that's the way I do. When I'm leading women, I always stand in the front and the women stand behind me. Okay, so either way is acceptable for you sisters. Uh, I wanted to uh, speak about that briefly yesterday because I get so many questions about it. Okay, so um, we have now embarked upon the particulars of praying in congregation. We spoke about how whenever there are two Muslims Two Muslims constitute a congregation. How many people constitute a congregation? Two. Okay. Congregation means a group. It's a bigger name, a bigger synonym for the word group. Whenever two or more people come together, that constitutes a group and the rewards of praying in a group. However, if it, when it comes to the place you live, if there are at least three men, I repeat, men, I repeat again, men, Muslim men living in the same town, Muslim men living in the same city, that's when establishing a mutual place of worship becomes incumbent. And I'm going to share this with you guys. More proof of the cotter of Allah. Allah knew that the day would come when women would try to be men. Allah knew that the day would come whereas women would appoint themselves to be imams. He knew that we Muslims would imitate the Christians and everything to the point where you have women ministers, women calling themselves imams. This is an example of Allah's wisdom. Why did Allah say men and not women? Why did Allah say when there are three men living in the same town? He did not say whenever there are three children of Adam. Children of Adam means women and men. The prophet Muhammad didn't say whenever there are, any, are three Muslims. Muslim means it don't matter if you male, female, young or old. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was clear. He said three men. Y'all get it? Let me share with you guys an email that I was just now reading before class. I got an email 
from some sister. She says, Sister Layla, I listen to your classes every day. She said, as you said in that hadith, whenever three or more Muslims live in the same town, you establish, okay, a place of worship. She said, you gave the own Dalil that a woman can be an imam. She said, because I am an imam. She said, I live in Okie Dokie, USA, and they're in the witch's country. She said, and I get, and there's other Muslim women here. So I lead them in prayer and I do kutbahs. I am an imam and I handle marriages. She say, I'm, I'm representing these women for marriage. Astaghfirullah. Y'all see how people will take the hadiths, twist them around. So right before class, I sent her an email back. I said, look at the hadith. That's why the prophet said three men, not women. You a woman, chicky. You ain't no man. You can't lead nobody in no prayer and be no and arrange marriages. And then I attached the other hadith where the prophet said, any woman that arranges the marriage of another woman has the curse of Allah on her and the marriage will never work. I told her, know your place, woman. This is why I tell y'all, y'all see why I'm big on words. I'm always telling y'all to read the hadith, look at the words because Allah knows his creation. Allah knew what would happen. When Allah created the pen, he said, write. And that pen wrote everything that would happen from that moment until the end of time. Allah is the creator. He created us. He already knows what we will do. He knows what our fate will be. He didn't jump in your body and make that fate. You chose your own fate. But he knew what your choices would be. So now do y'all see why the hadiths all are addressing men and not women? Because Allah knew the day would come when women would have the nerve to take those hadiths and use them as a justification to become an imam and establish an all-women masjid. She has an all-women masjid. She's the local imam. She's doing uh, interviews on TV. Y'all might have seen her on TV the other day. She was on CNN. She lives out in Okie Dokie, USA. They interviewed her on CNN. She has an all-female masjid established in the, country, the the heartland of America. Google her. She took that hadith and twisted it around. Got the nerve to say she listens to me. Lord have a mercy, chicky. You better listen well. I'm keen on words. It's not, oh, ye children of Adam. It's not, oh, you Muslims. It's not, oh, you men and women. It says whenever there are three men. Y'all get it? Be careful for this. And I'm going to let you sisters know, any woman that makes herself an imam and think that she can lead women in prayer and all of that, you women have the, you have the curse of Allah on you, sisters. Any man stupid enough to pray behind you, his prayers are not accepted. You women need to go home. Take care of your children, your families. Learn the deen the correct way. And raise your children upon Sarat the Mustaqeen. Instead of trying to bring that ex-Christian mentality into Islam. And by the way, this woman used to be a minister. That's the problem. You know, they convert to Islam from Christianity and want to bring their ministry. This ain't Christianity. We're Muslims. We don't do that. You can't be no female minister. We don't do that. You can be a teacher like I am, a caller like I am, but you know your place, lady. You can't mix Christianity with Islam. Either you a Muslim or you ain't. Ain't no in between. All right, just wanted to share that with y'all. That's why I'm always telling y'all to read the hadith and give me the right words. 
That hadith says men, three men for a reason. All right. So today we're going to speak more about the rules concerning congregational prayer. And where's my PowerPoint? Oh, God, please don't let me be done through my PowerPoint away, guys. Hold on. Uh, how to pray. Here it is. I got it. Woo, was about to say. Oh, is this it? Yeah, I was about to say I threw out, out my PowerPoint. Oh, Lord. He, but here it is. Mashallah. Today, we're going to speak more about congregational prayer. We're going to address uh, other things that relate to the imam, to the leader. And I want you women to understand any hadiths about imam refers to a man, not a woman. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said any nation that appoints a woman as its leader, it will never succeed. It will do nothing but fail. Any community that has a woman as an imam, you will do nothing but fail. Imam is one is for a man, not woman. Big innovation. We want to do a big talk about that in one of our call in and ask Sister Layla shows. Okay, well, let's take a look. Okay, everybody can see. We have a hadith. From Yazid El Aswad, he said that one day we prayed the Fajr prayer with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Mina, and two men came and stopped at their resting places. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered for them to be brought forward, and they came shaking out of fear, wondering what they had done. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, why didn't you pray with us? What stopped you from joining us in praying? Are you two Muslims? They said, yes, we are all messenger of Allah. But the reason why we didn't join in the congregational prayer was because we had already prayed. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you pray in your resting places and then come upon an imam, pray with him and it'll count as a voluntary prayer for you. Let me explain this. And this is what brother Merard asked one time. Brother Merard asked that question. He said, Sister Layla, you know, I had already prayed. I came to the mosque and prayed with the, in the congregational prayer. And then after we were done, another brother came and he wanted me to pray with him. Okay, what should I do have done in that situation? In that situation, go ahead and pray with him because it'll count as a voluntary prayer. Because again, the whole purpose of you men praying in congregation is the great reward it brings. Okay, so if this brother came to the mosque late and missed the prayer, okay, you can pray with him or the other way around. Let's say the brother already prayed. He went to a different mosque, made salat there. And then when he got to your mosque, you guys were just performing it. He could have joined in like these two men. What the prophet was telling them was, even though you had already performed the Fajr prayer, you should have still joined in and prayed with us because it would then have counted as a, a voluntary prayer for you. You guys get it? I want you brothers to remember that. You get blessings for joining in and praying it again with another person so they can get the reward of that congregation of praying in a group. Everybody got that? And there's the Dalil. If you pray in your resting places and then you come to a mosque with the congregation, Pray the prayer with them and it will count as a voluntary prayer. Okay. We have another hadith from Huzaifa. He repeated the Dur, Asr, and my Greer prayers, even though he had already prayed them in congregation. We also have the hadith of Anas. He prayed Fajr behind Abu Musa el Shari at a place where fruits are dried. And then he went to the congregational mosque and repeated the prayer behind El Mugira Ibn Shuba. Okay. 
But, but what Anas did when he left and prayed it again, this is not really something that you want to do because the prophet said, do not repeat the same prayer twice in one day. And what Anas did is since he already prayed behind Abu Musa, El Ashari, so much time had elapsed. He didn't have to go. He, he should not have prayed behind El Mugira because too much time had elapsed. And we're going to talk about that hadith. Listen to what Ab Abdu Barr said. He said, um, uh, Ahmed and Ishak agreed that this refers to praying an obligatory prayer. And then after time goes by, repeating it as an obligatory prayer. That's not the same as you just prayed it at the mosque and another brother comes in and you stand with him. Okay, Anas waited too long. He waited maybe an hour or so. That was repeating the same prayer twice. Y'all get it? Y'all get it? So the hadith about it becoming a voluntary prayer is when you're at the mosque and you, the, the congregation, you prayed in congregation, but another brother comes in who needs somebody to pray with him, that's different. Or say you already, you were traveling, you made the prayer, but when you got to the mosque, the imam was calling the adhan, so you want to pray it again just to get that reward. That's different. I hope this is clear to everyone, to the brothers. The brothers are the ones I'm concerned with because the sisters get their blessings praying at home. Okay? Brother Marar, do you understand that? Is he in here? Or is he at school? Do the brothers understand this? Okay. All right. Okay, good, good. You got it there on, on Trova? <laughs> the little kids on Trova, y'all get it? Yes, they said very clear. Very clear, Sister Layla. Masha'Allah. <laughs> okay. All right, let's continue. What about this? We talked about how things may happen during the prayer and the imam may have to leave. Maybe he passed gas or something. Maybe he broke his voodoo, or maybe there's a reason. He got to use the bathroom. You never know. Life happens. So how does the imam leave the place of worship? Well, it is preferred for the imam to turn to the right or to the left after the prayer and then leave the place of worship. Now, this is talking about leaving after the prayer. Say the prayer where you guys made salat, the prayer is over. The imam should turn to the left or to the right and then leave the place of a prayer. That's just leaving out. Okay? And what is that based on? The hadith of Qubayda ibn Hab. He said his father said the prophet would lead us in prayer and then turn to both of his sides and leave. He would look to the right, look to the left, and then leave. Okay, Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, وسلم, she said after the Prophet made the taslim, he would not sit except for the amount of time it takes to say, Oh Allah, you are the peace, and from you comes the peace. Blessed be you, the possessor of majesty and honor. And then he'd get up and leave. Okay, but this is the Sunnah. So it's from the Sunnah that after the prayer is over, the Imam turns to the right and to the left and then leaves out. That's a Sunnah. It's not a pillar. Also, Um Salama, she said, whenever the Prophet finished his prayers with the Taslim, he, the women, he would allow for the women to get up and leave and he would stay in his place. She said, and I think he did that to allow the women to leave before the men. So the men wouldn't look at the women. Okay. Like I tell you guys, the women didn't walk around and no burkas. 
Covering the face is not a not an obligation. Okay? So he will allow the women to leave out first and then the men. So that's the sunan, guys, uh, for you brothers. How do you uh, exit the prayer when you're done? Turn to the right, turn to the left, and then leave out. If you're after the salam, assalamu alaikum, rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum. Sit there for a minute. So the men should sit there for a minute to allow the women, because how do we stand? We're going to talk about that. The imam in the front, the men behind him, the young boys behind them, and then the women. So you want to give the women a chance to leave out first. Okay. Make sure y'all take a screenshot of this page. Make sure y'all screenshot it. Those are all the hadiths with all the sources. Takes me time to put this stuff together. Okay, what about this? This was a question that one of the brothers here from Pakistan asked me. He said, Sister Layla, and I had to go find this picture to see what he was talking about. What about this? Some of the masjids here, they have the imam up top like that. Y'all see this box? Can y'all? They have the imam uh, up top like that, higher than the people. Is this from the Sunnah? Well, it is disliked. It is disliked for the imam to be at a higher place than the fathers. That's based on this. Abu, Musa, uh, Abu Masood al Ansari. He said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade that the imam should stand on something higher than the people behind him. So the imam shouldn't stand on a podium. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about a plaque. You know what I mean? What you call them things? He shouldn't stand on a thing to make him higher than them. He shouldn't do that. Okay? Also, Hamam ibn al Harith. He tells us that Hudayfa led the people in prayer in Iraq and he stood on a bench. Abu Masood pulled his shirt. And when he finished the prayer, Abu Masood said, don't you know that this has been forbidden? Hudayfa said, yes, I know that. I remembered it when you pulled me down, but I had forgotten it. So this is the Dalil. I want you brothers to take screenshots. Those of you who live in Pakistan and Malaysia, where you got the imam standing up on top of something. This is not from the Sunnah. The prophet forbade you brothers from doing that. But there's an exception to everything. If the imam has a reason to be higher, then it's okay. For example, we have the hadith of Sahal ibn Sa'd. He said, I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sitting upon the pulpit on the first day that it was set up. He made the opening takbir while he was upon it and then he performed the bowing. Afterwards, he moved behind the pulpit and, and prostrated at the foot of it. Then he did the same again. When he finished, he said, oh people, I did that so you can follow me. And I did that to teach you how to pray. So if the imam is standing up on a, that's the word I'm looking for. If the imam is standing up on a platform that makes him above the people, but he's doing it so the people can see how to perform whatever the prayer is, then this is okay. There's always, as we talked about in our class, by the way, don't forget, uh, this weekend is our series on the lawful and the unlawful. You know, as I taught you guys, when it comes to the lawful and the unlawful, there's exceptions to every rule. Okay. This is one of the exceptions. The prophet forbade you brothers from doing that unless you're teaching the people or, or you want the people to see you because they can't see you or something. OK, maybe because I don't live in Pakistan. I don't live in Malaysia, but I heard Pakistan is one of the most crowded uh, countries in the world. Maybe the maybe the imam is standing on a platform so he could be seen or he can be heard by the people behind him. I don't know. OK, but if he has a reason for doing that, then that's OK. OK. Try to give your brothers, this is an example of that hadith. 
Give your brothers and sisters in Islam the benefit of the doubt. There's a maybe he's there doing that so they can be seen because you guys live in a highly populated country. Maybe they're standing up on a platform so they can be heard because there's hundreds of people praying behind them. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Okay, we also have another hadith. This is, uh, and this is from Imam Bukhari. He says, uh, from uh, he relates this from Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira prayed at the top of the mosque while following the Imam. Anas used to pray in the room of Abu Nafia to the right of the mosque, and the room was his height, his was tall, like this here, probably. And its door faced the mosque of Basra. The companions did not say anything about it. So again, if there is a reason, maybe for the, uh, and they say Imam Bukhari was saying in his comments uh, that, uh, and also El Bayhaki, they all said in their comments, they did that. So the people could see them and follow them in the prayer. They did that so the people could hear them. Okay, so, you know, be easy with each other as, as Muslims, guys. Be easy. Give each other the benefit of the doubt. Don't think, be so quick to think the worst. You know, you guys in Pakistan, Malaysia, that's, these are Muslim countries. Alhamdulillah. Everybody goes to pray. Alhamdulillah. Don't you know, we wish we could see that here in America. It's probably so many of you guys, they have to stand up like that so they can be seen and heard and followed. So think the, don't think, be so quick to think the worst of your imams there. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. Now, following the imam. Y'all can tell when we need donations. <laughs> Y'all know I'm silly. I'm sorry. Can't y'all tell when we need donations? <laughs> Does anybody get my, my kooky humor? Any of my Zoomers, do y'all get my, my humor? Why did I say, can y'all, can't y'all tell when we need donations? Can't you tell? Anybody, listen. But because it's no color? Yeah, because I had to go find some dang on drawn picture. <laughs> I didn't have no money to pay for no, you know, we got to pay for these pictures. So y'all can tell us the end of the month. We need those checks to come in <laughs> because we ain't got no money in our account. So instead of me going and paying for the pictures, I had to go find somebody's or uh, a drawn pictures. That's free. These are the freebies following the imam. It is allowed for a follower to follow the imam, even if there is no barrier. This is very important. I, hey, pay attention. You get it, Tiba. Y'all get it, Carmetta. This is a, I'm going to tell y'all something. Let me just get real. Here where I live, my city. Maybe that's why people keep stopping me. Hey, Sister Layla. Big debate going on. It's a big debate going on in a couple of the massages here where I live about the barrier. <laughs> Women should be behind a barrier. Okay, there. Are, I understand that some of the boards where I live is arguing with the imams about that. That. Should that you should put the women behind the barrier? Well, this is for you, the people in the city I live in. I'm getting ready to end y'all's debate right here. It is allowed for the follower to follow the imam, even if there is a barrier between them, as long as he or she can tell the imam's movements. By hearing him or seeing him. Let's look at it. From what I understand here where I live, 
I understand that there's a couple of messages that's got some women on the board. That's what happens. It's what happens when y'all put women on in, in stuff like that. The women want the barriers torn down. <laughs> From what I was contacted with, the women want the barriers torn down. Because they say, why come they just can't do like the prophet, Sallallahu who alayhi wa sallam did, which I understand their point. The prophet would have the men in the front, the little boys behind him, and then the, uh, the women behind him. They didn't have barriers. Well, from what I understand, the imams of these messages are telling them, yeah, well, they had higher back then too. The women were women of higher. Exactly. I agree. The women that were women of virtue. I agree. You women coming to the mosque, half of you ain't even wearing hijab. Hello. Goodbye. Okay. A lot of y'all coming to the mosque, gossiping, looking for a man. Hello. I agree with the imams on that. So we got a barrier. And I heard the imams are saying, y'all, can we got microphones, which they do. We got TVs, which they do. So you can hear us and you can see the movements. So pray behind the barrier. Hello, we dropped the mic. We rest the case. You boards. This is what happens when y'all make boards. This is what happens because the imam is supposed to be over the community, not no board. If you were following the sunnah, the imam is supposed to run the mosque, not no board. And why y'all got women on the board? What's the point? Most of them don't know nothing. We got a few that do. Like my best friend, she's on the board. She knows her religion. But a lot of these other women don't. Okay. Be careful with that. The imam speaks right. And y'all need to listen to y'all imam here in the city I live in. Listen to these imams and they're hundred percent right. I'd put a, if the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were living today, he'd have a, a barrier between the women. Okay. Where's the Dalil? This is Bukhari. This is El Hassan. He was the grandson of the prophet. He said, there is no problem if you pray and between you and the Imam, there is a river. Follow the Imam, even if between you and him, there is a road or a wall, as long as you can hear the opening talk beer. Hello. So y'all need to listen to the Imams and stop you bored people. Go somewhere and soak your head. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw how the sisters dress, how the sisters behave with their bad children running through the mosque, you know, he'd put a barrier up to. And what do you do if the Imam leaves out an essential act of the prayer? If a, a well, uh, the followers, your Salat is valid even if the imam forgot an obligatory act, okay? We have the hadith where the prophet said, if the imam leads the prayer correctly, then both you and he will get the reward. But if he makes a mistake, you will get the reward and he gets the blame. That's the answer to uh, the other question from brother, was it brother Tarek? One of the brothers here asked, what do you do? If the imam makes a mistake in the prayer, he forgot something. Is my prayer invalid? No, your prayer is still accepted. The blame falls on him. Look at the source. This is Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the imam is the warranter. If he has done well, it is for him and them. If he has done wrong, it is upon him. I put it in black so your brothers can see. Also, we have the hadith from Umar. He led the people in prayer while he was sexually unclean. He had forgotten. He repeated his prayer, but the other people behind him did not have to. Take a screenshot. Y'all see this? All the answers. We don't have to go to Islam Q&A website. Y'all need to burn that website. 
Y'all need to skip to the Hadith books. Every question you have about anything can be, especially the prayer is found in the Hadith. Okay? If the Imam must leave during the prayer for some reason, he should appoint another to continue the prayer. We have the Hadith of Amir ibn Maymun. He was standing there. And there was, was no one between him and Umar the day that Umar was killed, except Ibn Abbas. The pro, um, Umar had pronounced the takbir when he was stabbed. And he said, this dog has killed me. And Umar told uh, 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 Abdul Rahman Ibn Off to lead the prayer. That's Bukhari. So the Imam appoints someone. And then we have the Hadith of Ali. Ali was leading the prayer one day and his nose began to bleed. So he grabbed a man by the hand and pulled him to the front and left out. I want y'all to screenshot this whole page. That's the, this is what you do. Y'all see that? So for you women, if your masjid has a barrier, so what? Long as you can hear, which you can, long as you can see, you pray behind him. Why do you women want to go down there with the men anyway? Trying to get paid. We know what's up. I'm a woman. What you looking for? Okay, keep your behind upstairs. Keep your behind behind that barrier with all that perfume. And all that, your hair, not even wearing hijabs with tight fitting clothes on. And your bad, disrespectful children running around. All right, I'm going to stop right here. Supana kala huma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ila.